Well, CNN is now learning that last November, after the presidential election, the Trump administration was coming to Nunez's aid as it attempted to reveal his critics. Joining me now is former RNC spokeswoman Liz Mayer, who is being sued by Devin Nunes in two separate lawsuits for what she has tweeted and said about him. Uh, Liz, thank you so much for being with us this morning. What is your reaction to finding out that Nunes was getting aided uh, by this essentially an unmasking attempt? Well, I think like a lot of people, um, I'm still reading into this and processing this a little bit, um, but I am shocked and surprised. I said last night that I was shocked and surprised and I continue to be this morning. Um, you know, fundamentally though, there's gonna be a lot of discussion of this today. Um, for me, my main focus still has to remain on the fact that it has been over two years now during which Devin Nunes has been suing me in two different lawsuits for a total of $400 million. Those suits are ongoing and they are a real affront to the First Amendment. Tell us about that. This is a free speech is issue, as you put it. It is a free speech issue. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the Constitution specifically protects our right of free speech. And it protects that against government sort of intimidation and censorship. And at the end of the day, here we have a sitting congressman who is attempting to use litigation as a cudgel to stifle my free speech, also apparently others. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, if we go back and we look historically and we see what James Madison, the father of the Constitution, had to say, he talked about the censorial power resting in the people over the government, not the government over the people. And so I think what you've got with these lawsuits is a real inversion of that fundamental constitutional principle. And it's a real threat to every American civil liberties. You know, at the end of the day, these lawsuits are not about Liz Mayer. They're not about protecting my right to mouth off on Twitter. They're about everybody's fundamental basic human right of free speech that is constitutionally protected in this country and was recognized by the framers of the Constitution as God given. What so four hundred million dollars in these two suits mm -hmm. that are still ongoing, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, it's been more than two years, you're still dealing with this. What's the status Correct. of those cases and how much has this cost you to defend? Well, so they are ongoing. Um, I do anticipate that my team will be filing in some short order uh, motions to dismiss. Um, we'll see how that plays out. You know, I think to some extent, uh, some of this process has been lengthened a little bit by the pandemic and some of the effects that this has had. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's two years. It's a long time, right? Um, and again, I, my, I'm not going to be silenced. I refuse to be silenced. My concern here, though, is that this is the kind of thing that sets a precedent that will cause other people to sort of self-censor and to stifle themselves and to resist criticizing their government um, when perhaps they otherwise should and would. And so I really think it's important for that reason. Um, as far as what it's costing me, I'm very lucky that I have great legal representation that works extremely hard to keep costs down. Um, and so fortunately, I haven't incurred a ton of costs on this. But yeah, at the end of the day, the fact that this has been going on for two years and could go on longer, I am raising money to help defend against it. Because as I say, this isn't about my rights per se. This is about every American, irrespective of their political persuasion or philosophy. It's about our rights collectively as a people. So if people want to support that, they can go to NunezBFreeSpeech.com uh, and donate. Um, certainly every little helps. My hope is that I will never, ever have to use it that you will never have to use it. I'm sure the cost in time has been real. Um, you hear Republicans, uh, and look, you're a former RNC spokesperson, but you're hearing Republicans right now uh, criticize cancel culture. What do you call what, what you have experienced and what you see with these lawsuits and this now attempt to reveal who's behind the, the criticism? Well, I don't call it canceling because I'm still here. I haven't been canceled. I refuse to be canceled. Um, Devin Nunes would probably like it if a lot of critics would shut up and go away. I'm sure most politicians would. That's frankly why the First Amendment was written, right? Because governments don't like to be criticized and the framers of the Constitution wanted to protect our rights to do that. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm still here. Uh, there are a number of people that I am highly, highly critical of every single day, both parties, no party, right? And I think that that's a very important right for Americans to constantly exercise. Um, I do, and I hope that others will too.
Yeah, criticizing our public officials is quite American. It is, right? Uh, this ability to hold them to account and to say there's certainly what... That, there's, there's a reason that that right is the first that is protected in the Bill of Rights ahead of all others. That's my opinion on that. Liz Mayer, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me.